morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. I want you to feel comfortable that this is your nutritional radio program. This is your opportunity. If you have questions about anything to do with health and nutrition or prescription drugs or skin health questions as well, formulations, ingredients, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, if you've considered getting on a nutritional supplement program, you really should check out the Longevity products. They're all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. And if you're an entrepreneur, you really should check out the entrepreneur and business opportunity that's up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you enjoy the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to make your own hours and work out of the home, if you'd like to earn thank you checks by helping spread the word about, power, about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, you really should check out our website and our business opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, or if you like, you can just get your products at the wholesale price. Call 866-735-2470, or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And then I'd, like, I'd also like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, and Truth Transdermal C Balm, all up at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Transdermal C Serum was voted one of the top 150 products in the world by none other than Harper's Bazaar Magazine. That's, I believe, in the May edition, May 2017 edition of Harper's Bazaar Magazine. You can find all our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Treatments. Com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about brain health and heart health and the relevance of my favorite nutritional supplement, NAC and acetylcysteine, for addressing both of these concerns. NAC is a go to liver nutrient, it's kept in emergency rooms for liver detox. It's great for liver detox, even if you don't have an emergency. I use it in my blemish repair complex, which you can find at truthtreatments.com if you're dealing with acne blemishes or skin health problems. NAC is wonderful as a skin health treatment, great for dealing with acne. It's got relevance for eye health. You'll find it in a lot of eye vitamins. It is a stupendous 
stupendously, stupendously valuable and multifunctional nutritional supplement, and particularly important for blood fats and for the circulatory system and for heart disease. It just blows statin drugs out of the water when it comes to effectiveness versus non-toxicity. I haven't been shy about saying that statin drugs, statin mania, if you will, is one of the biggest con jobs, if not the biggest con job in pharmacomedical history, probably the biggest con job in all of, uh, in the entire history of pharmacomedicine is this cholesterol hypothesis and this nonsensical idea that you can statin drug your way back to health, back to heart health. Now, it's impossible to know exactly how effective these ridiculous, ridiculous drugs are at preventing heart attacks. After all, if you, if you don't get a heart attack when you're on a statin drug, you can't tell whether you didn't get the heart attack because of the statin drug or you just weren't going to get a stat. You weren't going to get a heart attack. So there's no way to really assess the value of these things because you can't really tell how much they've helped. Still, the fact is that if you take a poison, you are poisoning yourself and make no mistake about it. I can't be clear, any clearer about this, folks. As a registered pharmacist, I'm telling you, prescription drugs are poison, not metaphorically, not poetically, not hyperbolically. I'm not exaggerating. They're literally poison. Now, you can say, you can make the argument, as silly as it is, that, well, if we poison the body, we will reduce the risk of some kind of disease, but it just doesn't make sense. You're administering yourself a poison when you swallow your Lipitor, your Mevacor, your Zocor, whatever. That means a burden on the liver. That means an expenditure of nutritional resources to detox the drug. And very likely, it means some kind of side effect. And when the numbers are crunched, according to the website actualcures.com, only one in 94 patients taking a statin will receive any benefit. That means that basically means 99% of statin patients are poisoning themselves with a, with a drug for no good reason. To this day, the cholesterol hypothesis, which states that elevated cholesterol levels cause heart disease, is not only unproven, but also highly unlikely to be correct. People with low cholesterol get heart disease, and they die of heart attacks all the time. And people with high cholesterol live long lives without heart disease. Still, 25% of American adults over the age of 45 are on a statin drug. How can this be? How can one out of four Americans, how can 25% of American adults over the age of 45 be on any drug? This is craziness. Any, it's likely that even more will be put on these things in the future. This despite the fact that any scientist who understands even a smidgen of biochemistry knows that simply suppressing cholesterol production pharmacologically with a drug is not an intelligent way to prevent the number one killer in this country and around the world, that is cardiovascular disease. Even worse, drug companies are constantly looking to give doctors even more reasons to dispense these things. They want children on them. From the New York Times, June 2008, quote, the nation's pediatricians, this is the American Academy of Pediatrics they're referring to, are recommending wider cholesterol screening for children and more aggressive use of cholesterol-lowering drugs starting as early as the age of eight in hopes of preventing adult heart problems. What planet are we on? They want, this is the American Academy of Pediatrics. This is supposedly intelligent physicians. They want to put eight-year-olds on statin drugs. And then they play games with healthy cholesterol numbers. Several years ago, uh, the American Heart Association and the American Academy of Cardiology actually changed the guidelines for dispensing statin drugs. They lowered the, the bar. They lowered the threshold on cholesterol scores so that more people would be on their prescription drugs. In, they, in effect, they increased the number of Americans who would become potential patients, potential victims of statin mania from 43 million to 56 million. That's a 20 5% increase in uh, new patients, new business, if you will, from Merck, Sharp, and Dome, and Pfizer, and, and all the other drug companies that are putting out these statin, statin poisons. Let me be clear here, as clear as I can be. Lowering cholesterol pharmacologically, poisoning cholesterol-making cells in the name of health is a dumb, dumb, dumb way to prevent heart disease, and for that matter, the top
tired old meme that you need to avoid. Avoid egg yolks and saturated fat and butter to protect the heart should be regarded as mainstream medical stupidity at best. And manipulation of human beings at worst. Manipulation for profit at worst. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're looking for... Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. We've got a search engine up at BenFuchsArchives.com. That's a compilation website with all my other websites. And then uh, you can also uh, head to uh, brightsideben.com. We have a search engine up there, as well as all the ar- all the programs archived. Brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Got news stories, blog posts, as well as videos at criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. Also, all the longevity products, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You could be a longevity distributor, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and also make some money at the same time. Call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, so we've been talking about NAC, and and we'll be talking later on about how NAC is important for cardiovascular health. NAC has a little molecule of sulfur, which is super duper important for the heart. It's also very important for detoxification. And we've been ripping into the statin drugs now for uh, about a week or two. There's so, and for good reason. There's so many reasons why. Uh, there's so many reasons why these drugs are just nonsense. Worse than nonsense. They're awful. And the 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 mean the the notion that we can drug ourselves back to health is just ridiculous. Even the mainstream press has gotten the message that statin drugs and lowering cholesterol have nothing to do with heart health. From the Daily Telegraph, June 2016. Headline, quote, high cholesterol does not cause heart disease, new research finds, unquote. You don't need the Daily Telegraph and the mainstream press to tell you this. I've been saying it for decades. I've been saying it since the 1980s. Dr. Wallach's been saying it for decades. Anybody who has half a biochemical brain understands that high cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease, elevated production of cholesterol. Sure, there's cholesterol there in the plaques, in the arteries, but it doesn't follow that shutting cholesterol production down is in our interest. According to the article from the Daily Telegraph, research, this is an article that quotes research from the British Medical Journal, showed that in a study of 70,000 people, there was zero link between bad cholesterol, so-called bad cholesterol, and premature deaths from heart disease. And even more, 92% of people with high LDL cholesterol lived longer than patients with low cholesterol scores. According to an editorial published in the Daily Mail, September 7th, 2015, this was an a, a, a editorial that referenced the medical journal prescriber, quote, industry-sponsored studies, which found that only 0.5% of healthy people avoided a heart attack or stroke by taking statins for five years, unquote. 0.5% of healthy people avoided a heart attack when they took statin drugs. And make no mistake about it, doctors want healthy people to take these things too. And you know what? I could read you these statistics all day. It doesn't matter. The studies don't matter. It's just a question of common sense. Statin drugs are toxins. They're poisons. The body must detoxify them. And this is all drugs, by the way. All drugs have to be detoxified. You put a drug in your system and your cells say, what the heck are you and get away from me? Unless the drug is too powerful or the drug uh, is disguised somehow. That's how uh, drug companies uh, compel cells to take the medicine. Cells aren't going to voluntarily take a poison. The poison has to be overwhelming. It has to overwhelm the cell's defenses or it has to be disguised. If you've ever taken Accutane, you know that the dermatologist will say, don't take vitamin A when you take your Accutane. 
Why? Because Accutane is disguised vitamin A, and if you really took vitamin A, or if you took real vitamin A, your cells wouldn't take the Accutane. Drugs, statin drugs or whatever, have to be eliminated, uh, have to be detoxified and then eliminated. That means they're costing you nutrients like vitamin C, they're costing you vitamin E, they're putting a load on the liver, they're putting a load on the bile system. If you have a gallbladder problem and you take a drug, now you run higher risks of gallstones. If you have a digestive problem and you take a drug, especially a, uh, a, a drug that suppresses cholesterol production, you're going to run risks of, uh, of affecting your body's ability to digest fats. It's endless the ways that drugs interfere with the body's normal, healthy biochemistry, all in the name of lowering a score, all in the name of lowering a test score. That's the purpose of taking a drug. It lowers the test score. It doesn't get you better. There's no drugs that will get you better. Maybe an antibiotic will get rid of an infection, but drugs that you take for long-term chronic diseases, they don't make us better. It's just kind of, some kind of hypnotic trance that we're all under. I'm going to go to the doctor and he'll take care of me we'll, uh, with a medicine. You know, this is absurd. This all started, by the way, or at least it really got going in, in the early 1900s with the Flexner Report that mandated drugs and surgery as the way to take care of the body. It actually forced, compelled doctors, good doctors, to throw away their electronic machines and their acupuncture and their homeopathy and all the other alter so-called alternative ways of treating the body. This is in, if, uh, in 1910, the Flexner Report, it forced, compelled doctors to use drugs and surgery or so-called standards of care, appropriate and approved ways of treating the body. And who suffers? Look at the look at our health, our collective health as Americans since 1910. Look at well, look at what's happened to our health. Have we gotten better since the Flexner report? Have we gotten better since the standardization of medicine? That's all you got to do is look at the statistics and look at the numbers and look at the evidence. It's simply a question of common sense. Drugs are poisons, and only a biochemical ninny or maybe a doctor can possibly think that putting poison into the body is somehow a health strategy. So what is the real cause of heart disease? It's the same as the real cause of any disease. And once we nail this thing down, folks, there's going to be a lot of unemployed doctors and there's going to be a lot of healthier people. The cause of all disease is in the word disease. Dis-ease. It's a body out of ease. It's a body that is in survival mode. There's two kinds of modes of operating. The body has two kinds of ways of operating. It has a survival way of operating, and it has a thrival way of operating. And this distinction between survival and thrival reveals to us the, the cause of disease and the cure of disease. Survival neurochemistry, or if you prefer, sympathetic nervous system system activity shuts down healing. When the body is in survival mode, we don't heal. When this body is in survival mode, we don't grow and our bodies don't repair. When the body is in thrival mode, we heal, we repair, we're healthy. Survival is great for survival, but it's only supposed to be short term when we're running from a tiger. The survival mode is for emergencies, and it's only supposed to kick in short term. When the survival way of operating operates long term, we go out of ease, we go into dis-ease, we get sick. Disease, the, the, cure, the, the key to understanding disease is in the word dis-ease. It is an excessive and out-of-balance stress response. The key word here, response, not the stress, the response. When the stress response is out of balance, we get sick. And there's no drug on planet Earth that can make a difference. But it doesn't matter because we don't need drugs or doctors. We can handle this ourselves. We can do this. We can do our health business ourselves, and we should. All right, I'm Farmer Mrs. Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back at you with more. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, anything we're speaking about here today, health challenges your loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on. We'll get to you momentarily if you're on hold. From the journal Frontiers in Public Health, study finds 90% of American men are over fat. 
Now, this isn't overweight. This is over fat. Over fat refers to the presence of excess body fat that impairs health. And you could be normal weight. You can have the right amount of weight. This is why the scale is not necessarily a good indicator of how healthy you are or how much body fat you're carrying. You can have lots of muscle and weight and be over your so-called appropriate weight and be really healthy or vice versa. You can be underneath your appropriate weight, but if you have too much body fat, you may not be healthy. Excess body fat, especially when it's around the middle, the abdomen is associated with increased risk for chronic disease. It's associated with increased mortality, it reduced quality of life, and most importantly for our purposes, at least for what we've been talking about for the last couple of days, over fat, the presence of excess body fat is a huge problem when it comes to heart disease. No, it's not cholesterol that causes heart disease, but you could easily have a heart attack simply by carrying excess body fat. Every pound of body fat that you carry has 100 miles of excess blood vessels that the heart has to pump through. This is why being over fat is linked to high blood pressure, it's linked to coronary heart disease, strokes, type 2 diabetes, all kinds of health issues are associated to over fat. What is it that causes over fat? Sugar and insulin, primarily. Toxicity can also do it because the body uses, toxic, uses fat to store toxins. Get rid of the body fat. Best way to do it, of course, is to stop eating the foods that spike your insulin. The processed sugars and the processed fats. That's really where the problem is. Scientists find a new way to treat type 2 diabetes from the journal Molecular Metabolism. Check this out. They now want to use a drug called Belvic. Belvic is an anti-obesity drug to treat type 2 diabetes. They figure that by reducing obesity, pharmacologically of course, you can treat two type 2 diabetes. Well, yeah, that's true. Lose weight and your type 2 diabetes will, uh, you, uh, you will improve. Your blood sugar will improve, but you don't need Belvique to do it. By the way, Belvique works with the serotonin system. Serotonin reduces appetite. Serotonin is the body's vigilance hormone that's produced during the daytime, and this is a way, a great strategy for losing weight or for, for reducing your appetite. Serotonin reduces your appetite. Make sure you're, make sure you're uh, supporting your serotonin system with things like 5-HTP, which is a supplement that is pre-serotonin, if you will. It's converted into, into serotonin. The B vitamins, especially vitamin B6, is important for serotonin production. Magnesium is important. Vitamin C is important. This is, all highlights the importance of getting on a good nutritional supplement program immediately. If you have a weight problem, you will notice results rapidly. If you get on the B vitamins, if you get on the Beyond Tang, Tangerine. This is how we want to, excuse me, we want to protect our heart. Getting on a supplement program, making sure we're eating differently. This is how we protect ourselves from diabetes. Not a statin drug, not Belvic, an anti-obesity drug. Making sure you're on a supplement program, making sure you're relaxing the body, making sure you're reducing your, your uh, interfacing with toxicity, including prescription drugs. Common sense, folks. Common sense. Tomorrow we'll talk about some real, we'll talk about how heart disease really develops and we'll talk about some real nutritional strategies, non-drug strategies, non-medical strategies that you can use that will truly help improve uh, the likely, improve or reduce the likelihood, I should say, reduce the likelihood of cardiovascular disease without a doctor and without drugs. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Good morning, Stuart in Denver. How you doing, buddy? Uh, pretty good, but I still have this issue with my nasal polyps. Other than that, I've uh, just mixed up my BTT and I have my fat coffee for breakfast. Okay, so what's going on today? <laughs> your 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 uh, uh, bulletproof coffee? You mean the coconut coffee? Yeah. Coconut oil coffee? Good yeah. deal. How do you like that? Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Makes. I, I've never had coffee. I don't really. I, I mean, I don't even like the smell of coffee. But uh, it, does it improve the taste of the coffee, or does it amplify the taste of the coffee? Fat sometimes enhance the flavors. Yeah, it's in, like in, a, it's like a really good latte with no sugar. And got yeah, it's it. Really, you know, really good. And I use a blender, okay. and I have a stainless steel uh, basket in my coffee maker when I make it at home. 
and uh, so I upped the antioxidants and the oils. So, well, well, just so you know, you also get a bigger caffeine boost when you put coconut oil. It it, it releases the caffeine more effectively from the coffee, for better or worse. Yeah, most most days I work a ten hour day, so uh, and I only do it in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely don't do it at night. So, what's going on? Excuse me, what's going on? How can I help you, Stuart? Well, my uh, nasal polyps are all inflamed because of all the fires we've had and pollution, extra pollution uh-huh. and stuff in the Denver Basin. And so I've just been, I've been doing everything else right. I'm on a ketogenic diet. and uh, you know. Uh, How's your height to weight, Stuart? Uh, really good. I've lost over 100 pounds over the last two years. No, so. no kidding. That's awesome. Yeah, so... I still have kind of have bad boobs, so I okay. know I'm still that's where your polyps you know, estrogenic. That's what I was going to yeah. tell you. The, the polyps are, probably have something to do with estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone, and cysts and polyps and boils and and, and skin tags and weird kinds of growths oftentimes are, are uh, the result of excessive amounts of estrogen, and that can be related to problems with insulin. So you definitely want to be focusing on estrogen metabolism. Uh, if you have any digestive problems, that's really where estrogen estrogen toxicity starts. To to accrue is when you have, you're not breaking it down and clearing it effectively. Also, have you yeah, tried probably, progesterone cream? Have you tried using progesterone cream? No. You might no, want to I consider using I have really good notes on that. Uh, I probably haven't digested fat most of my life because I've had respiratory problems most of my life. And I've probably, gone back probably to so. vegan and never liked you know, meat until recently when I started getting grass-fed. And <laughs> Do you notice you eat less food or your, your appetite is decreased when you have more meat? Uh, yeah, yeah, and, but uh, I, you know, want to keep, keep uh, you know, fatty, good fatty beef. Good fatty, right? Uh, is what I've been because the protein can be turned into sugar and can be a problem. Too much protein really. No kidding. Set, set there. That's yeah. exactly right. A lot of us, a lot of folks don't realize that the protein can be converted into sugar. It can throw off diabetes. If, the protein's important, but you want to be using your protein. If you're not using your protein, it'll get converted into sugar. So you want to go out if you're if you're going to be eating lots of meat or lots of uh, high protein foods. You want to make sure you're lifting weights or doing some kind of resistance training or somehow building muscle, utilizing that protein. So how can I help you today, Stuart? I just wanted to know if you came up with anything else. Um, I was listening to a thing on autism, a national autism specialist, and mostly about biochemistry. He just offhandedly said that every autistic kid that they swabbed their nose had a fungal infection, and that that was huh. partially causing the drainage and everything was partially causing their digestive issues. I can see that. He just that. offhandedly Fungal. said that and didn't get, give anything else on it. Well, here's the thing. Fungus overgrow when the digestive system is messed up. There are bacteria in the gut live in balance with fungus. Uh, bacteria and fungus have this kind of antagonistic relationship. You know, penicillin, the most famous of all the antibiotics, comes from what? Do you know where it's derived from? Uh, yeah. Uh, Fun- uh, fungus. Fungus, right. Fungus. Yeah. Fungus make antibiotics, and they make them as part of their ongoing battle against bacteria. They're in constant battle. And so the bacteria that live in our gut make antibiotics. The bacteria live, that live in our guts support the immune system to help fight off fungus. But when we have dysbiosis, that is messed up gut bacteria, fungus can overgrow. Hang tight, Stuart. we got to take a break, and then we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return. We're back on the bright side. Farm Ben here, eight four four two three six sixty ten. Finishing up with my buddy Stuart in Denver uh, for fungal infection. Stuart, work on the gut. There's a really cool book, by the way, called The Yeast Connection. You may have heard of it by Dr. William yeah. Crook, and uh, he talks about I might avoiding sugar. It's a great book. He, he talks about avoiding sugar, uh, and that's always a good strategy. Uh, sugar throws off gut bacteria. It also feeds yeast, so going low-carb, ketogenic, that's a great strategy. Uh, making sure that you're using probiotics, the ultimate nightly essence, eating fermented foods. Uh, work on the gut, basically, whenever you have a fungal yeah, infection the, the, or a yeast infection. The nightly essence is what really got me over, originally over the hump to get more nice and coconut coconut oil doesn't need bile so it starts cleaning out the liver of the bile ducts at the other end you know, which for is, you is crazy. Oh, they're yeah. talking about saturated fats that they don't even bring up any of that very good solid research about that that about even, coconut oil. even alcoholic yeah even alcoholic liver disease has been uh, coconut oil has been tested on alcoholics that like produce no bile and their liver is completely clogged. You know, you're absolutely so correct. Co- co- 
Coconut oil is a source of something called MCTs, which I've been using many for many years in my skin products, as well as nutritionally. I've been taking it myself. Bodybuilders know all about MCT because, like you say, uh, Stuart, it does not require bile. It goes right into the bloodstream. It's it, it, uh, it's used as ener used for energy. It's not stored as fat. And coconut oil is a great source of MCTs, medium chain yeah, triglycerides. Uh uh, yes. Braid octate oil by uh, Bulletproof uh, is MCT8, and they have lots of research on that now, too. That's basically uh, endogenous ketones derived from That's, coconut. MCTs get converted into ketones very readily. There's not, there's not ket I don't believe there's ketones. There's no ketones, I don't well, think. This, in. Yeah, this is this is one that it, uh, it gets uh, blood ketones. Uh, faster, yes. quicker, it, and it, it stimulates key, it stimulates ketogenesis. That's right. That's why coconut oil should form the crux of your fat intake on the ketogenic diet. All right, Stuart, I'm going to motivate you. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, being on the ke being on a ketogenic diet, what yeah. most people eat doesn't even look like food to me. So I'm never hungry. You. I forget to eat sometimes. Uh, I get the 90 for life, so I've covered all the bases, so I could anything else that fits within my diet, I could eat and you know cook. I have a I have a whole uh, chicken in my slow cooker right now, making chicken soup and uh, good for you, Stuart. Uh, Pre-range organic chicken in my slow cooker right now. So <laughs> nice. All right, buddy. Good to talk to you, Stuart. Have a great day, man. Thank you, man. Keep keep up the rave. Keep all those drug companies because the staff uh, are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. And by the way, when you're on the ketogenic diet, you want to make sure that you're cranking the vitamin E. Vitamin E protects, uh, protects blood, fat, uh, protects fats. It's a fat stabilizer, keeps fats from oxidizing. So if you are on the ketogenic diet, make absolutely positively sure you're using your vitamin E. All right, Mary from Michigan. Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. Good morning, Ben. Uh, I got a couple of quick questions for you. Um, number one, is there can you is there any reason or any way around uh, needing a um, uh, prescription to get the uh, the test strips for diabetic uh, uh, testing machines? You, can just, you don't need a prescription for those. You well, don't? I'm not. No, no. You can just go to the drugstore and get those. The test strips. Oh, I didn't. Really? Yeah. I thought you yeah. needed a prescription. You, you might need a you might need a prescription for your insurance to pay for it. That's different. But as well, far as no, buying, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, you can just get those. That. You can just okay. get those at the drugstore. Go ahead. Uh, what, what else? Okay. Was that right. what you want? I'm I'm about I'm about to have um, uh, cataract surgery, and okay. they are uh, requiring a checkup. And I don't have a family doctor, and I was I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that the doctors aren't going to want to do tests that I don't necessarily need to have done. Well, uh, what I, would I'm, you, not, what, I'm not sure what kind of tests they want, but here's what I'm going to tell you about cataracts. I think couple they want to know that I can I can withstand the anesthesia. That's it. Okay, so that, I can't. I don't really know what kind of tests they're going to do, but I can let me give you a couple ideas about cataract surgery. First of all, it's surgery, and right. even though your doctors will tell you it's routine, and, and a lot of times, you know, most most people don't have a problem with it. It's still a surgical procedure. It's not perfect, and you got to be on your toes. You got to be very, very vigilant. And you want to make sure that you check, do a lot of research on the surgeon and the doctor, and you uh, you make sure you take care of yourself uh, uh, nutritionally before your surgery. That is, use vitamin E, zinc. In fact, get on the Healthy Start Pack, essential fats, N-acetylcysteine, taurine, anything you could do to preload your body with nutrition before you have your surgery is going to give you a better prognosis. You're going to have better results from your surgery. And then also, when you're done with your surgery, make sure you're on nutritional supplements. Now, if your doctor tells you, we don't want you on supplements, insist that you're on nutritional supplements. They will make your surgery go better, and you'll get better results and the likelihood of problems will be reduced. Uh -huh. uh, look for eye vitamins. You might want to consider the Vision FX from Longevity or the, or the Occutive, or you can put together your own uh, uh, healing program, and there's a lot of nutrients you could do. Uh, digestive enzymes also can help you take them on an empty stomach. They can help reduce inflammation, post-surgical inflammation, and if you take them pr as a pretreatment, prophylactically, you can reduce inflammation as well. And also, vitamin K is an awesome uh, nutritional supplement for the bruising, uh, for any kind of surgical bruising. Vitamin K can help reduce surgical bruising. Okay, right, but you, gonna, can't, you, you can't let me, you, you don't have no idea what would be required for checkup tests. I don't know what kind of tests they're doing, no, but if you find out, I'd love to know if you want to call us back, because I don't know what they're, <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Well, I'm afraid 
I'm going to go into a doctor's office, then they're going to want to run a whole battery of tests. They I very well need. could. They very well could. And I, I don't know what they do before, before cataract surgery. I mean, surgery. just to know that I'm going to be able to withstand the anesthesia, and as I understand, it's just, it's not even a, you know, they don't even put you to sleep. They just, you know, numb the area kind of thing. I just, I, I you know, that's what's got me concerned. And I can't get an answer from anybody. <laughs> You know, I, I wish I could give you an answer because I, I don't have one. But if you do find out, let us know because I'd like to know. Okay, will do. All right. All right. Thank thanks, you. Mary. Take care. Have a great day. All right, Curtis in West Virginia. Good morning. Thanks for holding on for so long. Appreciate it. What's up, buddy? Well, I've talked to you before about testosterone, but I've got something much worse right now. Okay. I, I, I ended up getting sick the other Friday on the 14th. Threw up everything, and I thought my was hot, and I won't go into all the gross details. I ended up in the hospital emergency room. They run, they run the lab work. They found out I've got a high viral infection and a high bacteria infection. And I have in the past having these Malcolm teeth taken out. I ended up contracting that SpireChat infection. SpireChat in the amount. I, um, Curtis, your, your line is kind of muddy. I'm not quite understanding what you're saying. Are you, are you uh, saying you have some kind of infection? I, 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 I was shaking too bad here. I get it closer. I've got a viral infection and a bacteria infection. And I'm right now just lost getting anything done. I'm finally home, but I can't get no one to run, run some kind of a lab test to check to see if it's a spire chat for one of these bad infections. Plus, I've had the Lyme disease. Before. All right. Here's the deal. What you what I'd be doing is I'd be uh, using bentonite clay and charcoal to try to clear whatever you have out. Uh, bentonite clay is an awesome supplement. It's basically minerals, so you get minerals out of the deal. But it also helps ma magnetically attract your chelate toxicity and, and bacterial toxins out of the body. So get a, uh, go to a health food store, get yourself some bentonite clay, do a teaspoon in water every day. You might also want to use charcoal capsules for the same reason. Also something called zeolite, X-E-O-L-I-T-E, -E, can do the same thing. All of these magnetically attract toxins out of the body, and that would be the strategy I would use. You can also boost your immune system, high doses of vitamin C, make sure you're using selenium, make sure you're using zinc, three very, very important nutrients for boosting immunity, and then get on a good source of protein. The immune system is actually built out of protein, so make sure you're using something like whey protein if you can handle whey, or hemp seed protein if you can, can't do the whey protein as well as egg protein. Keep your intake of sugars down, sugar, uh, especially uh, fast-burning sugars, both uh, which have a, uh, an immune suppressant effect, and uh, relax the body as much as possible, activating that relaxation nervous system. That's where healing occurs. I can't say, I, I can't tell you about your bacterial infection. I don't know exactly what it is, but all the strategies I gave you will support your immune system and help clear out any toxins that are local. Uh, Curtis, I want to try and get a couple more calls in. I, hope, I only got about a minute. What about Anything? the silver? I've got silver spray here, too. Silver is so-so. I've never really seen great results with colloidal silver, but you might try. It's certainly not going to hurt you. I'll catch right. up with you another time when we have more time. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. God Thanks. bless you, buddy. All right. Uh, Elaine in Alaska, what's going on? Hey, good morning, Ben. Boy, you're a busy man this morning. I know. Got full boards here. Still still got people on the line that want to talk to us. What's going on? Okay, real quick. Uh, uh, that's, that, that's the music, so it's got to be really, really quick. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll probably try to call tomorrow, but it's about um, amalgam fillings, having them taken out. Yeah. Uh, Are you having yours taken out? Well, my husband has MS, and the dentist that um, he's he's going to a new dentist now, and he he was in favor and recommending having them taken out. But before we proceed, I thought, well, I wonder if you maybe have some. You got to be careful when they take out the amalgams. It's a good idea to do it, but when they take them out, you got to be careful like, that no mercury gets into the blood as they're removing the amalgams. Use selenium and N-acetylcysteine to extremely and vitamin C, three extremely powerful chelating agents for mercury. Hey, I'm out of time. Uh, I've just got about 20 seconds here. Please call back tomorrow. We'll finish up. Okay, Elaine? Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. God bless you. And I'm sorry if we let you on hold, but that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks.